Pageant, playing great golf at Hoylake, finishes with the brilliant score of 287. It's a great honour for me to take this cup back to Ireland with me. And as Money's 26-year-old Australian has calmly bought off the record feat of winning the Open Golf Championship. And there he is, the Open Champion of 1967, Roberto de Vicente. Major number 11. Tiger Woods is back in the winner's circle at the Majors. For the third time, it is a McElroy Major. Rory has won his Open. Blown upon by mighty winds, breeder of mighty champions. The immortal words of Bernard Darwin are as true now as they were a hundred years ago. And whilst Royal Liverpool, or Hoylake as it's more affectionately known, is home to some of the greatest champion golfers the world has witnessed. The term breeding is synonymous with horse racing, and that is where the story begins. The club began in 1869, where it shared the land also used as a racetrack. And the subtle nods to its equine ancestry are immediately noticeable when you appreciate this. Throughout history, Hoylake has been a trailblazer in the game credited as the first over the line for many things in the game of golf. The first to host the Amateur Championship, the first iteration of the Walker Cup, the first international match, and its members John Ball and Harold Hilton were the first to set a number of records of their own. Whenever you play Hoylake, you feel instantly exposed. Whether that's due to the relatively level topography and modest dunescape that makes it impossible to escape the elements, or simply the stress that your game is under from the second you're under starter's orders, I don't know. But the ingenious routing at Hoylake never gives you a chance to settle. The first hole splits opinion, with its usage of internal outer bounds hugging the right side of the hole, where the race course used to exist, makes for a brutally tough start. Many architects that would follow in the preceding years would often highlight the importance of a steady and simple start to a round but at Royal Liverpool, you're straight into it, and the course is all the more memorable for its intimidating first tee shot. Hoylake has benefited from some significant changes to its course over time, and perhaps the most ambitious work is on the recently completed new par three 15th hole, the Rushes. The work by Mackenzie and Ebert is magnificent. Waste areas create a visually stunning tee shot to a treacherous and elevated par three green complex. Not only does the hole now play in the opposite direction to its predecessor, the 13th, but it also requires a complete change to the routing on the back nine. Now, it's important to note that the Open is played in a different order, with players starting on the 17th, making their way back up 18, playing the first as their third hole. This means that the new par three, at a mere 137 yards from the back, will be the penultimate hole making for a superb spectacle before the par 5 finish at over 600 yards. If you wonder why the pineapples on the putting green are here, it's to represent the club's hospitality, which simply knows no bounds. And when you go through the clubhouse, you get hit from every angle with the history Hoylake is steeped in, and the record of its past champions is seemingly endless. Hoylake member John Ball became the first to win the Open and amateur titles in the same year in 1890, a feat that would not be seen again until a certain someone from Atlanta, Georgia revisited the club 40 years later. Another fellow member, Harold Hilton, won his second of seven major titles at Hoylake in 1897 and would go on to enjoy a simply staggering amateur career, only eclipsed by that same someone. That someone is Bobby Jones, who in 1930 lifted the claret jug at Hoylake and would go on to win the legendary Grand Slam. A feat that to this day has not been matched. In fact, the closest anyone has come to it at the turn of the century just so happens to have won right here at Hoylake in 2006. History pours out of every corner of Hoylake and we were lucky to chat to the club's historian, Joe Pinnington, who knows it all better than anyone. And in 1930, July 1930, we made Bobby Jones an honorary member of Hoylake. And the same month, 
Dr. Frank Stableford joined Hoylig. So in the list for 1930, you got two of the most incredible names in the history of golf. For two totally different reasons. You know. <laughs> One man who saved the club golfer by the same of his system, and then the great man himself. Tiger's win in 2006 with that famous two iron represents so much more in the game of golf. We spent some time with Sam Cooper, member of Royal Liverpool's Green Committee, to hear more. I think people have become so accustomed to the perfect, the perfect lushness of Augusta and that's how golf was presented. It wasn't the firm and fast, the browns and the golden fairways. That wasn't the done thing anymore. It was a poorly maintained golf course without a sprinkler system if it was brown. But that's when the strategy comes back into play. And I think from that moment on, it's almost become cool again for, for golf to go back to that. And it's more back to golf's roots. And um, this club is kind of the, uh, kind of sums up that 2006 championship. That's the big thing at Hoylake. Change is inevitable, and despite its place in world golf as one of the most significant clubs in history, it shows no fear in making bold and brave decisions to make way for the next generation. Most clubs with a history like Royal Liverpool now stand as relics, entrenched in the past with efforts focused on maintaining the course's original design. Hoylake flies in the face of that, prepared to make big changes to keep pace with the ever-evolving game, and that allows it to keep making its own unique history. I don't know if the term progressive traditionalism exists, but if it does, then that's Hoylake through and through. The club is much stronger as a result of all of this, and its future, like its past, is bright and promising, reflecting the club's motto, far and sure.